Will Jerron Ennis, Virgil Ortiz become a bigger super fight than Spence versus Crawford? What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. All right, so Diedrich James gave an interview recently, and he was speaking about Jerron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz, and he was giving his thoughts on whether that fight will be a big fight of the future or even a super fight in the future uh, of the welterweight division. And as I read the article, I started to think, you know, will that fight become a bigger fight than Spence versus Crawford was for this generation? It just never happened. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen to Jerron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz. Uh, I haven't seen Ortiz fight live. I've watched some of his highlights. I've got to watch Boots. Uh, I really like Boots. You know, I hear a lot of good things about Ortiz. You know, the one thing I don't hear about either one of those guys is is ego. So, you know, I don't. I haven't really heard anybody say that Virgil Ortiz has a ego that's hard to deal with, or that he avoids fights or doesn't want to fight this guy or that guy. And when you look at Boots, Boots just wants an opportunity, man. He ain't ducking nobody. He just wants an opportunity. So I don't anticipate either one of those guys when they do get in positions of power within the welterweight division. And it's going to happen sooner than later. Uh, I don't anticipate either one of those guys being the type to dip and dodge around the fights that fans want to see. So that brings up the question, you know, when will those two guys meet each other? When is the right time for those two guys to face off with one another? I don't think the time is right now. I think both of those guys need at least one Spence or Crawford on their resume for them to get over that popularity hump to where they're just as famous as those two guys. Now, it's different for Crawford because Crawford is uber famous he just can't sell a fight. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, Crawford's an anomaly within the sport. <laughs> Earl Spence, you know, uber famous, can sell a fight. And I think that's what Virgil and, and, and Ennis need to be shooting for. They need to be shooting for that Earl Spence type of status. Now, I don't want them to, to walk the same path as Spence. I don't want Ennis to be out here, you know, only fighting when it's convenient for him or only having to do what you know your promoter says he's in a good position you know just having a a, a television contract with showtime uh, that way there is no promoter trying to dictate over your career not saying that that's all spence's fault or that al Heyman's doing this just to spite the fans but it's, it's a business, and Al Heyman's in the business of making money. I don't spite him for that, but the business of making money is not always in the best interest of the fans. So as a fan, I'm, I'm going to speak on why I feel like we're getting screwed at the end of the day. So, you know, I think it, it bodes well for Boots. You know, Boots is in, the, in control of his own career, basically, at this point. Uh, I think that's why he has so much upside is because... Unlike both of those guys who started out on a promotional company, Boots is kind of starting out on that Mayweather path. So he's going to have a lot more say-so into how his career, you know, finishes and and whether his, the longevity of his career is, is all going to be based off of him and, and good decision-making on his part. So if he makes a good decision and he picks the right fights and he, he puts on fights fans want to see, then I think he's going to be extremely uh, lucrative. He's going to become an extremely uh, lucrative product in the sport of boxing. And I think once that Virgil fight does come to fruition, whenever it does, it's going to be a huge fight as long as both of those guys can keep a decent record. I, I don't anticipate both of them having to stay undefeated uh, for that to happen. But I think as long as they keep a decent record, they keep entertaining, you know, being entertaining the way they are, and they keep fighting tough fights, then the sky's the limit for both of those guys. I'm a little partial to Boots at the moment, you know, because I've saw a little bit more of Boots, but I think Virgil 
he's also going to be the name up next, you know, as long as he can do exactly what he's supposed to do. Now, do either one of those guys have to fight Spence or Crawford? I actually think, I actually think the burden of proof, in a way, is on Spence and Crawford. It's not really on Virgil and, and Ennis. I think if either one of those guys leave the division without facing, you know, one at least one of the newcomers, it's going to leave a stain on both of their career. If both of them do it, you know, I think both of their careers will be stained. And I, I think karma comes back to bite you sometimes. So, I, you know, I think when they get up to 154, there might be some unanticipated antics that end up ending their careers the way that neither one of them want their careers to end. But because they, you know, for lack of a better word, are ishing or, you know, dissing the 147 division and not giving everybody else opportunities, there's no guarantees for Spence or Crawford when they move to 154. Uh, and I think that move is coming. But is that move, you know, is that move premature or is that move absolutely necessary? You know, I think only time will tell at this point for spence you know he's really dictating the pace of everything right now he he tried to allow crawford to have some type of say so and crawford played games and now we're in the situation where al Heyman and spence are kind of dictating what's going to happen with the west with the rest of the welterweight division here on now y'all let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section below do y'all think that Jerron Ennis versus Virgil Ortiz will surpass uh, Crawford Spence super fight status? And you think those two guys will surpass Crawford and Spence as far as wins and losses? And do you think one of those two guys will beat Spence or Crawford ultimately to become the truth <laughs> at the end of the day? Y'all let me know what y'all think about all that down in the comment section below. Hit that like button for me. Sure, sure, sure. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Highlight me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. More than likely to get a response on the tube. Holler at me over there. Hit my Gmail if you want to collab. Flock of cards at gmail.com. Better have some money and we are out of here. Flow sick when I flow quick. Better go get your whole click. Spot less who you rolling with. I done told the chick. You don't want to have to hold your lips. So hold your lip. Now roll your hips. Spot this team. Cold as click. Roll that shit. Blow that shit. Keep that nigga with the gold that spit. Off the chain. Tossing flames. Caution dames. Let her know. Can't put a chick on a pedestal. Don't think niggas is ready for. Who it be? Lewis Keys. Take a chick and bruise her knees. Guarantee you lose to me. Niggas ain't confusing me. Just keep it real with me. I get the feel with me. I'm looking real spiffy. Kicks worth about a bill, 60 Back in the day, I used to say low That used to pass the blunt, I used to say no But now I'm smoking reefer, and now I'm drinking liquor And now I'm in the telly, and now I'm taking pictures We got them millimeters, we got them VHSs So when we zoom in, you can see they hurt My niggas, my niggas, my niggas Getting money for blocks. What y'all think about me now? Gotta keep my head.